a rare bomb cyclone is slamming the United States, and it's about to take a huge turn. A dangerous winter storm is already producing blizzard conditions across the northern United States, while a major ice storm is creating hazardous impacts across much of the northeast. But this storm is far from over. Another foot of snow is possible today across portions of the Midwest, Great Lakes, and Northeast, with additional freezing rain worsening ice accumulations in the northeast. At the same time, a strong cold front is sweeping across nearly the entire country, driving temperatures down to their coldest levels in more than two weeks. Once this bomb cyclone moves out, the weather will remain active. More snow and additional winter storms are possible heading into January, as a favorable jet stream setup supports clipper systems capable of producing more snow across the northern tier. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about this bomb cyclone and other storms that are coming as we go into early 2026. And we are going to begin by talking more about this bomb cyclone that has formed in the United States. And for those that don't know, a bomb cyclone is when our pressure drops by 24 millibars or more within 24 hours. And we've experienced that here over the last 24 hours. This went from about 1,000 millibars down to about 975 this morning. Right now, we have snow falling still across the Great Lakes, including areas like Chicago and Milwaukee. So some of you are waking up to some snowflakes this morning. And this snow is still pretty light to moderate. It's not very heavy in these areas anymore. Most of the heavy snow has now transitioned into Canada. Later into this morning and into the early afternoon, the storm system is going to be very intense across the Great Lakes and the Northeast. Despite most of the snow and rain moving out of the United States, one thing that's not moving out is the cold air, and the other thing are the high winds. We are going to continue to see wind gusts around 40 to 60 miles per hour pretty much all day today, anywhere in this black circle, so that includes the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and the Northeast, but on top of that, Arctic air is still spilling out of Canada, and we have a very strong cold front that is making its way all the way down towards the Gulf Coast. So if you've not really felt much of a temperature change yet, you're definitely going to feel it today as this cold front continues to push to the east. And then eventually, as we go into early Tuesday, you might think we're done talking about this big storm system, but we actually won't be. We'll continue to have some pretty intense lake effect snow impacting the northeast. We'll have another little Alberta clipper that's going to come out of Canada, and that's going to dump around one to three inches of snow across the Midwest. But this low pressure system is going to be spinning back up here in Canada. And you might be wondering, why is this even important and why am I talking about it? Well, we are talking about it because we are going to have our jet stream angled out of the Northwest for a prolonged period of time, likely about five days or so. And though there will probably not be a whole lot of snow that comes from this jet stream pattern, one thing that we are going to see is a continuation of very cold air across the Northern Plains, Midwest, Ohio Valley, and the Northeast. That means winter is going nowhere in these areas. On the other hand, we'll have ridging developing back over in the Southern Southern Plains in the desert southwest, and that's going to increase temperatures and decrease the threat of showers and thunderstorms through at least the middle of the week. And then eventually, as we get closer to the end of the week, we should start to see a new storm system form in the Southern Plains. What exactly happens with that, we don't really know yet. The GFS model, though, is showing that we could see some showers and thunderstorms across the southeast on Friday that could lead to a threat of severe weather. And then eventually, as we go closer to next weekend and into the beginning of next week, things get more uncertain but it looks like we're going to start to see the West Coast wake up again with more big storms, which means that we should start to see the return of winter storms and even severe weather. But the good news for the time being, it does not look like we're going to have any sort of major winter storms or severe weather outbreaks this week, at least nothing like what we just saw yesterday. Now, as I just alluded to, snow is going to continue pretty much all day today across the Great Lakes. We will have some snow squalls out there, which means visibility could be reduced under a fourth of a mile at times across Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. We we could even see some light snow make its way down into Kentucky today, which is an area that we actually saw some pretty strong storms last night. And then as we go later into today and into tonight, we'll continue to see a little bit more snowfall across upstate New York and right along Lake Erie and Lake Ontario before eventually tomorrow things start to quiet down a little bit. We'll still have some bands of lake effect snow, but it will not be nearly as intense as what we are talking about today. Now, in terms of additional snowfall out of this winter weather event, we will see an additional three to six inches of snow for most of western Michigan. Some isolated locations could pick up around 10 to 11 inches in far northern Michigan. And then across the Ohio Valley, most of Ohio, central and northern Indiana, and even eastern Kentucky will at least see some snowflakes today. I don't know if we're going to see this widespread of accumulation, but a dusting to an inch or so of snow is going to be possible in some of these areas. And then back over near Lake Erie and also Lake Ontario, that is where we're expecting at least a few more inches of snowfall here over the next 24 hours. And then eventually as we go into Tuesday, we should see a really decent clip of snow just to the southeast of Lake Ontario. 
Ontario, where we might even have a few isolated locations near one to two feet of snowfall when this is all said and done. Same thing with just south of Buffalo. There will be two different areas that could see some significant lake effect snow over the next 48 hours. Now, in terms of ice accumulation in the northeast, this is the ice that we've already seen, which has been very significant, upwards of a half of an inch of ice accumulation in parts of New York and New England. We will see a little bit more freezing rain throughout the daytime today, especially if you are in central and northern New Hampshire, Maine, and also central and northern Vermont. Likely going to see at least another tenth of an inch of ice in a lot of these areas, so be prepared for very slick roadways. Anything that's untreated is going to be slick, and power outages will continue to ramp up. And another big concern for almost the entire eastern tier of the country today are the wind gusts. If you have any outdoor plants, it is going to be windy all day today. Wind gusts right now are already around 40 to 50 miles per hour for most of the Midwest, and as we go into the afternoon, the winds will continue to intensify across the eastern Ohio Valley and then back into the mid-Atlantic and northeast. Some areas in Pennsylvania and New York could have wind gusts upwards of 50 to 60 miles per hour, so a very windy day is ahead. We already have wind, wind advisories in effect from basically Texas all the way through Ohio, so again, expect a windy day today for most of you. And then as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, things will start to get a little bit calmer for most of these areas. It will stay windy all the way through the end of the year if you are in the Midwest in the Ohio Valley, but not nearly as windy by Wednesday and Thursday. Now let's talk more about the temperature trends across the United States for the next seven days, beginning with what is happening right now. We have below average temperatures across the Great Lakes in the Ohio Valley, and then warm air that is starting to build all along the West Coast. As we go into tomorrow and Wednesday, that cold air is going to be circling right around that large bomb cyclone back over in Canada. And that means if you're back over in the Midwest, Ohio Valley in the Northeast, you will likely remain chilly at least through Wednesday and Thursday, unless you're back over here in Missouri and Kansas, where things are going to be warming up pretty quickly. And then on Thursday and Friday, that cold air will make another swing into the Northeast. Warm air is going to be building all across the Great Plains, the Ohio Valley, and back into the Southeast, which might be enough to fuel a possibility of some severe weather sometime around Friday or Saturday in the Southeast, if that storm system were actually to come to fruition. And then eventually by next week and early next week, we could have the return of record-breaking heat again across the Great Plains and the Midwest before eventually we start to see a different weather pattern likely settle in sometime closer to the middle of January, where things get a lot more active. Now, these are what the feel like temperatures look like across the country right now, and we have a lot of areas in the Midwest that are upwards of 10 to 25 degrees below zero for feel like temperatures. And then here's the sharp divide. It's right along the Appalachian Mountain Range. We have temperatures in the 50s and 60s along the East Coast, and then right behind that, the feel like temperatures are down into the teens and single digits in areas like Kentucky, and that surge of cold air is going to make its way into the mid-Atlantic and the Southeast by tonight. Things are going to drop off dramatically if you're back over in Atlanta, Georgia, back through Charlotte, North Carolina, or in Washington, D.C. Tuesday morning, that cold air will continue to sink in across the Northeast, and then by Wednesday and Thursday, we are just going to continue to see reinforcements of cold air for those in the northern tier of the country. It's going to remain pretty chilly here, especially in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and then back into the Northeast. And then eventually, as we go into Thursday and Friday, we will eventually start to see the return of some warmer weather across the Southeast, but it's not really going to get much further north until around Sunday or Monday, and that is when we should see the return of some much warmer weather all the way back up into Illinois and Missouri, which could once again be on the verge of record breaking. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Our next video will likely be on Wednesday, but if not, we could have one tomorrow if the weather looks active enough, so click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates, and we will see you in the next video.